guys, Roxanne here from Tiny Home Living. Um, it's a nasty old day on the prairie today. Started snowing again. The chickens aren't happy and neither is Sadie. But um, Chris has got a fire going. He came out to um, get the primer on this wall. So basically it goes up above the doorway there and then um, over to here. So that's the primer. Be able to put a coat of red on tomorrow maybe and then get um, basically that part and the wall down there by the wood stove redone. I don't think I'm gonna bother doing adding anything here. This hasn't split as much, uh, shrunk as much because it's not um, by the wood stove and the tiles are gonna cover that. So that'll be that done. Um, we'll be able to get this red paint done. The red paint has to be, um, finished in order to get the trim on in the corner there and that way it covers this and up by the ceiling so that'll make it look more finished in here and then we can concentrate on the windowsill. I think Chris put another coat of paint on the parts that he had to redo for the windowsill and the bathroom window too. So we're just get, again uh, doing a bunch of little stuff today and since the wood stove is going um, I'm going to try putting a, a coat of seasoning on that new wok so that I can hopefully try it out later in the week. We're going to take one of the bigger chickens out of the freezer and um, cut it apart, use the chicken breast to make some stir fry and um, see how this works over the fire. Anyway, um, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this video with your family and friends. Now the other thing we need to do is figure out what we're going to do here for uh, shelving material um, to get these things out of the way now. Now of course they're in the way in here. <laughs> Just going to let that heat up a little bit more. We've got the um, crate pan here too that is fairly new so I think I'm going to put some oil on it. I'm actually going to use uh, avocado oil today. Um, it has a high heat point so I'm going to use that on both of them. So I'm just going to let this sit for a while now um, to get it heated up. Not too happy with how rough the surface is on this. A lot of people talk about the pre-season pans um, and they're, the surface is really pebbly so a lot of people will take that off and uh, grind it down and then season the pans. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the part of the stove that has the rings on it first because I notice it gets like really dry here. I'll show you what that looks like too. Well, I don't know if that's a high enough smoke point or not. <laughs> I'm going to have to open the door here, I think. It doesn't take very much oil, that's for sure. Um, but this part over here is a little bit gooey, so it's like because it doesn't get as hot, so um, I'm going to put a little bit more on the back side there. I think I'm going to open the door. I want to get some on here. Um, before I put the, take the rings out in order to do the walk. Hmm. That looks like it's a little off level because it's all flowing to the back, which I don't want. I'm not putting as much on as I did when did it with the lard because I it just flows everywhere. These silicone brushes are awesome for this. I didn't put very much on there, but boy, oh boy. It um, sure spreads. I 
I'm sure I'll get no end of comments about this. <laughs> I don't get too bent out of shape. If I'm doing it wrong and doing it wrong, I'll redo it. <laughs> Not a big deal. And see, I was going to use the lard again. Chris thought I should use this, but to me it's getting gummier there than it did with the lard. So, I'm going to let that burn off for a minute. And then I'll lift those um, rings out of there and put the wok in. The wok's getting pretty hot just from sitting on the stove top. Hmm. Learn something new every day, my grandpa used to say. So is avocado oil better or is lard better? To me, it seems like the lard worked better. It didn't smoke as much. Hmm. I've seen some videos where people are using all kinds of animal fats, bacon grease, all kinds of stuff to season with. Um, so, because I know a lot of people use bacon grease, of course, to season their cast iron pans. This to me is making an awful lot more smoke than the lard did. And I've got the door wide open now. So I'm not too happy about this. I usually put some on the handles too. Um, this one I might turn over and do the bottom half as well. Got lots in here now. Try not these bristles, they splatter everywhere, so try not to splatter too much on my tiles, my pretty tiles. is hot now. doesn't take long either when you put um, things on the stove top. It sure doesn't take them long to get hot. Now Chris put that big, uh, we measured it, it's a 15 inch cast iron pan. I think there was a 17 inch one that had two handles, like not the pointy handle, the other kind of handle on um, both sides. Not 17. Apparently they they were making they made a 20 inch one that's no longer made. So I'm just going to spread the rest of this on the stove top. And I'm gonna put this in the oven. Sure doesn't take much to uh, cover everything. Mm -hmm. The 
smoking has dissipated a bit now, thank goodness. I'm going to get one of those, um, Lee Valley carries them. It's like a little chain mail thing that is supposed to be for cleaning cast iron out. Oh, yeah, I'm just making everything smoke here again, but I might as well do it while I have the door open. I don't like the way that um, avocado oil made this go really gummy. Way more so than the um, lard did. So, but I think once I'm cooking on it all the time too, it's going to make a difference. Just don't know. Totally new to me. Now I think I'm going to turn this walk upside down, down underneath of it too. Yikes. Definitely hot. Now I'm getting it, it splattering on my beautiful nickel um, handle here too. But like I say, these bristles on these silicone brushes kind of spread everything everywhere. Maybe I'll just put some on here and let it run down. Yeah, that works well. Plenty. Holy moly, just hold it on there a couple of seconds and it's enough. Yeah, so I'm hoping next time we go into the city I can get uh, the little chainmail thing that Lee Valley has to clean the cast iron with. I think the idea is that it doesn't damage the um, seasoning on the pans. Yep, that was <laughs> it's all in the group. thing, the bottom done now too, so I'm going to turn it back over. Now I've got oil everywhere, so I'm going to clean up the bit here first. Um, yeah, I got it all over my door again, my beautiful stove. so good opening that door. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put my oven mitt on just in case because this is so hot now. If I even touch it a bit I'm gonna be burning myself. Yeah so I can actually see where the avocado oil kind of went gummy. And um, that I've got so much excess oil on here now, but what I do when it's like that is get the edges done um, because of course you can't see the back there. Um, so it gives me an opportunity to wipe that excess oil onto the back of the stove and the edge all the way around. So I don't know if anybody <laughs> has any suggestions. Um, I was kind of surprised how little there was. And there isn't actually anything in the manual either to say what to use. I'll just show you what it 
looks like over here now I've got this oiled really good and, and the thing is it's nice and even so it's not pooling in the bottom there like it was. That's why I turned it over because I want the, it nice and evenly coated, the handles, the bottom and everything. So you can sort of see how it sort of looks a little bit crusty there. And it sort of gathers. But I really don't think that's a big deal. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure somebody will have a lot more experience than me at this. I'm getting better at that too, <laughs> using this tool. Um, but yeah, um, get that done. I'll maybe get another coat on it tomorrow if um, we're out here. And I'm really excited about trying it out. Now the other thing, like I said, what we need to do down here is to figure out what depth of shelf we're going to have to put here. You can see the dilemma if we put them sitting this way. They are easier to fill and easier to scoop stuff out. But... <laughs> whoops. The, um, you know, this is underneath. So I think what I'm going to have to do is slide it out in order to use it. But then what do you do up here on the second one? Just have to give that some thought. But the shelf is going to have to be about the depth of this um, door, which is a 20 inch door. So I'm thinking maybe 18 inch depth of plywood there. And then to four feet wide and I think we're actually going to put a couple of plywood let or sorry uh, two by four legs out at the front because Chris is worried about all the weight being on the back um, on the wall I mean he can try hit and hit a stud but if he doesn't it's not going to hold the weight of these things these these are just incredibly heavy well most of the smoke is cleared <laughs> <laughs> and see now that like this one here a couple of these ones with the flour and sugar are almost empty so I want to get them all in place in there get them all filled up and then we're stocked up for a while so you can see it's kind of a dreary day out here but the chickens are happy you know they don't it's not that cold out and they really don't seem to mind the snow or the rain they're just happy to be outside and there's lots of grass out there that's showing now that they can peck in and that makes them happy. So if the chickens are happy, I'm happy. What do you think, girl? This isn't the inspector, I don't think, but they all seem to want to come in here. I'm sure they'd be happy to all be household chickens. <laughs> yeah, you got a little bit of frostbite too, didn't you, sweetie? None of you are going to have points on your combs this summer. They'll all be gone. Yeah, we're supposed to have some pretty decent weather till close to the end of February, so a couple more months we'll be thinking about planting seeds, planting the garden. That's why I want to get as much done in here as I can because, um, you know, nobody wants to be inside when the weather turns nice. And the quicker we can get all these little jobs done, like the trim and the windowsill, um, and the paint and stuff in here, get these food vaults taken care of, the sooner I can get my tubby. I was moaning about my tub again yesterday. Sure needed it after moving this stuff. My goodness, these things are just, I don't know how much they weigh, but they're, they gotta be, they hold, it says they hold 100 pounds of flour. I think when it's rice and sugar, it's a lot more because you see a cup of sugar is 200 grams. A cup of flour is 145 grams. So depending on what you put in them, it makes a really big difference. Now you can see where there's a tiny bit pooling in the bottom there again. So I've got the, um, normally you, you season these and then you put them in the oven at a high temperature. So. I think I'm going to move it over onto that side because I think that's going to be way hotter than the oven even. And then um, when I go in for the night, you can see how some pooled here too because of the... Uh, and that scratch that. But you see, again, 
you know, this isn't going to stay um, perfect and clean all the time. And even for someone who like me who's OCD, this is a work. This is going to be a workhorse, not only um, to keep us from having to spend a lot of money on propane, but um, to serve all our cooking needs. I still have to um, try baking scones in it and um, cake and pie because of course those are the three things that you know you want really good results. Um, so yeah I'm going to leave it heating up on here. Maybe I'll take that, just that little bit that's um, pooling in the bottom and this will get the bottom um, done really good too. Now I can see how there's some pooling on this handle and not this handle. So just get it all nice and even and so what I'm going to do is move the racks in the oven as well. I'll put that shelf down so that I can get everything in here because the walk is quite deep. That frying pan is so big it essentially takes up the whole oven which again um, if you've seen previous videos I um, had planned on getting the size 5 of the stove. Now the reason I didn't was because I checked the oven measurements in all of my pans from my bake shop. This oven would have been, I think it's 8 inches narrower. It still would have been an awesome size oven, probably about the same size as that uh, little um, off-grid range, but um, it wouldn't have fit all of my baking pans from my bake shop. So I did go with this one and, and I'm really glad I did. Um, you can see how on this wall or any spot, if this was a 30 inch stove instead of a 40, it would have taken up a lot less room and I think it's just an amazing stove for a tiny house. Um, but I am really glad I went with the bigger one. Um, we're going to get one of those little fans that's heat activated to blow the heat into the other side of the tiny house. So it's just going to be awesome. It's going to be, like I say, a total workhorse for heating and for cooking on. You can see how this is smoking a little bit. That has got to be really hot now. Now I've changed my mind again. I think I'm going to leave these on top of the stove because it gets so much hotter um, rather than put them in the oven because the oven's not going to get up to 450 degrees or whatever it is um, it needs to season uh, cast iron. Plus this was sort of pooling at the end of that because it was tipped in this one so I spread this out evenly again and I'm not going to leave them all on the top of the stove. Now you can actually see where this is actually drying out now. And that's sort of what you want, is for it to all get right into the pores of the cast iron over and over again. So just do that dry spot again. So I'm going to leave these all on top of the stove because um, it does get a lot hotter on the top of the stove. I wish I had something, maybe somebody could let me know if there's something you can put on the surface of the stove to see how hot it gets. I'd like to know actually what the differences in temperatures are from over here and over here on the cooler side. It would be interesting to know. And I don't know if that oven thermometer would work or not. I guess I could try it. I'm going to put a couple more bombs on the stove here too. Keep this nice and hot. So that um, thermometer went from 250 down to 2, so that one definitely doesn't work on a surface. So I'll put it back in the oven. Oops. These oven mitts are so awkward. I think I'm going to get some of those ones that are like gloves, like cloth gloves. So yeah, that, um, that'll get it heat it up and keep it really hot here so that um, this stuff gets seasoned pretty good I think. Well for the first time on this one anyway and this needed more as well. 
You can see how this looks more like a bronze color now. Um, those of you who watched the video when we first got it, it was almost like, sort of like the color of the tiles there. And th it's amazing to me, like the second you put that wood in, um, once you've got your good coals there, like any good wood stove, it just takes right off. And then again, we've got these vents only open a little bit so that the heat is going to the oven mostly. But um, got the flue closed, so this top will get really, really hot again. It's a little bit uh, too much on the surface of this one, but that's okay. I might spread a little bit of that onto there again. Put this one really good. That's the main goal today is getting this coated really good. Um, I think I'm going to sign off for today. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share this video with your family and friends. And we'll see you next time.